Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. In today's video, I want to pick up where we left off on our introduction to stick welding, and I want to talk about how to select the proper electrode for the type of work that you're doing. Now, I kind of went back and forth about how I was going to film this video, because there is absolutely so many of these videos out there, and there is so much information and so many different types of electrodes, it's hard to put it all into one video. And honestly, with what is available to you, this video could drag on forever. So I want to do just a basic video to give you an idea of what you can find and what to look for when you're selecting your particular electrodes. Here I have three pieces of metal set up as an example of things I may want to potentially weld. I have 3 30 seconds, 5 30 seconds, and I have 3 eighths. One of the things that you're going to want to consider when purchasing an electrode is how thick is the core wire. Now, this electrode right here is a 1 8 electrode. Now, that does not mean that the diameter of this electrode is 1 8. That means the diameter of the core wire without the flux is 1 8. Now, common electrode sizes include 3 30 seconds, 1 8, 5 30 seconds, 3 16, 7 30 seconds, and quarter inch. Now, once you increase the size of your electrode, you're also going to need to increase the amount of amperage that you're pushing to actually use it effectively. A smaller or thinner core wire, you use a lower amperage. Higher core wires, you're going to want a higher amperage. If you're going, let's say, a 60, 10, 330 seconds, you're going to be working anywhere between 45 and 75. Uh, if you're doing a quarter inch 6010, you can be going as high as 220 to 325 amps. By now you're probably wondering what those letters and numbers mean. Well, I'm going to put three examples up. Alright, these are three very common types of electrodes that you can find in almost any welding supply store. Now, the E simply stands for electrode. The first two numbers in the column stands for the tensile strength of the weld, and that's with a proper weld. The 60 series is 60,000 pounds of tensile strength. The 70 means it's 70,000 pounds of tensile strength. Now, you don't have to use just one rod on a project. You can actually use several different types of rod on a project. Let's say you're doing pipe welding, for example. Some people will use a 60 series rod because it's more aggressive and it gets more penetration into your root pass. And that's what they'll do the root with. They'll chip out all the slag and then do a 7018 cover to add the additional tensile strength to the weld. Now, the third column all these happen to be into the number one. One is the position in which you can weld. One means that you can weld flat, overhead, vertical up and down, and horizontal. Now the last number is what some people get confused with. The E6010 electrode, according to the AWS classification, is a high cellulose sodium rod, and it's to be used with DC reverse polarity. Now the E6011 is a high cellulose potassium rod and it can be used with either AC or DC reverse polarity. So basically the last, um, the last column on the electrode is the type of flux that it is and what the different chemical characteristics of it is. Um, you can get rods that have a high iron oxide, you can get rods that have a low sodium, a low hydrogen, uh, low hydrogen potassium. I mean, it goes on and on and on. There are just so many different types of rods out there, but these are the ones that you're going to encounter most when you go to welding supply stores. Now, if you come across a rod like this, with five numbers, the first three represent the tensile strength. So that particular rod would be 110,000 pounds of tensile strength. Now, every once in a while, some manufacturers, you might get like a dash two, anything like that. That's usually the polarity that you run it with. Um, and you can always check the packaging itself for what the polarity is supposed to be when you're choosing your electrodes. Uh, on your welder, depending on what you have, 
There's either a switch where you can switch it from AC, DC, reverse polarity. Um, some have the ability to just dial it in. On others, if you want to reverse the polarity of your machine, you swap the place of the stinger and your ground, and that will reverse the polarity on your particular machine. So just refer to your manual for the machine you have, and it'll explain how to do that. How you choose to store your electrode will ultimately determine the lifespan of your electrode. Um, these things do have a shelf life. They are affected by things like temperature and humidity. Now, this is still sealed with the tape from the factory. Um, it should be good for quite a while. It should actually be good until I decide to open it. Now, the flux will break down over a period of time, but it's still pretty well protected, and I don't have to worry about these things going bad. Now, this is a small package of 1 16th Lincoln Electric 6013s that I picked up at a tag sale. Now, I know they're no good. Um, I only paid a dollar for them and I actually bought them specifically for this video. Now, what I want to do is show you exactly what can happen. They still look pretty good. When you pull them out of the package, see that? All the flux is starting to disintegrate. And that really means that these are no good. They are past their life and they're pretty much worthless. If you see that when you open up a package of electrodes, just throw them away and get new ones. It's not even worth trying to weld with them. Most vocational schools or high production welding shops will typically have something called a rod oven or sometimes a rod furnace. Uh, all these really are climate controlled chambers that allow you to prolong the life of your electrodes. It keeps things like humidity and temperature in check. For a small shop like mine or for somebody who's just starting out, they're really not practical and they're really not needed. Um, it's a high dollar item, it's something that stays plugged in so it's constantly draining a little bit off of your electric bill. And if you buy the electrodes you can only see yourself using in the immediate future, you're not going to have problems like this guy did with his rods going bad. Now you can get one pound packages, five pounds, ten pounds, and this is even a fifty pound box. Now normally I wouldn't go out and buy fifty pounds of just one type of electrode, but this guy well, he has a story behind him. Someone had placed a special order at my welding supply shop and they didn't return for it and then after a confirmation just turned out they didn't want it anymore. And I was able to pick up 50 pounds of electrodes for the price of, I'd say, 10 pounds. So I really got a good deal on it. It's something I really couldn't pass up. Now, the Boy Scouts of America had just come out with a welding merit badge back in March and I am intending on being a merit badge counselor for that badge. So these rods will come in very handy when I'm teaching young kids how to run a bead, how to set their temperature and their amperage and things of that nature. And if I happen to blow through them, I'm not really wasting a lot of money. And, you know, it's nice to be able to pass along my knowledge to a younger generation. And my supplier even told me that the Girl Scouts of America have started doing something with a welding style merit badge. And uh, Dana has a background in the Girl Scouts, so we're going to throw our hat into that arena too and see if we can get some young girls in this shop and teach them how to do some welding as well. Now, the whole learning process in welding is pretty much hands-on. You really need to run the arc, get the puddle moving, and see how it reacts, uh, getting your angle down. So you are going to be blowing through a lot of rods. Um, when you practice with something like, let's say, a 7018 rod, you're going to find that rod flows pretty well and it's pretty forgiving. If you get something like a 6010 or a 6011 rod, you're going to find that that's more aggressive and it's going to dig into the metal more. In some cases, you're actually going to have more undercut in your steel. So when you go from one rod to one that you're not familiar with, you may have to actually start at the beginning and run a couple of beads just to get a feel for that rod. Now, for those of you who don't want to go out and buy a pound of rods to see if it's something you want to experiment with, Good welding supply centers have sample packages, and my welding supply center I am very thankful for because it's awesome. I use Holcon Industrial Gas in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and uh, Vinny, the guy behind the counter, he is just awesome. Um, he's actually helped me track down some items that were hard for us to find. Uh, Dana needed smaller <clears throat> welding gloves than just about anybody had in stock, and he took the time to really hook us up. He had a vendor come in with about 30 different pairs of gloves to have her try on so she had something that really fit her hand well. 
And if you can find somebody like that in this industry, I mean, treat them like gold because they are your best friend. Now, one of the things that Vinny hooked me up with was a sample package of electrodes that I had never even heard of before. Now, normally the sample pack only comes with four different electrodes in it. Um, these were a four pack of 30, oops, excuse me, three 30 seconds diameter electrodes. And what he did is he actually threw in a couple of more, same style of electrode, but it had a thicker core wire in it. I think it's one eighth. But now I have a little sample, I can get a scrap piece of steel and I can practice running beads on them and see if I like these electrodes. Um, a lot of good places will have samples, so you don't have to go and spend $20 on a five pound container of electrodes. You can just pick up a sample and just burn through them and see what you think. And this particular one has the part number right on it. Um, it gives me the current information on it, what I need as far as positive or negative electrode. And it's really well done. So explore those avenues. If you have a good welding supply center, see if you can get samples of different electrodes. Okay, YouTube, I'm going to end the video here, but I'm going to give you one final thought. Now, I know this is a relatively short video for its topic, but like I said before, there is so much information out there on stick welding electrodes, and there are so many different varieties to choose from. I could sit here and talk about them all day long. Now, if you're watching this video, you have access to the internet. You can go to suppliers like Hobart and Lincoln and Inweld and actually look at the stats of their specific electrodes and see what they're good for. When you go shopping for electrodes, go to a real welding supply center. Now, like I said before, Vinny up at Holcon and Bridgeport has answered every one of the questions that I've ever been able to come up with. I haven't found a topic that I've been able to stump him with yet. Now, if you go to a big box store, like a home improvement store that just happens to sell welding equipment on the side, you're not going to have access to that knowledge. You're going to have somebody who specializes in electrical or plumbing or carpentry trying to answer your welding questions based on what they were taught in a 15-minute class and a brochure. So if you really want good information, go to a good source to get it. Don't expect to find a welding expert at your local Home Depot. Well, YouTube, it's time to end another video. And I just wanted to take the time to thank everyone for stopping by our channel and supporting us so much. Um, we really didn't think this channel was going to take off the way it did. I know it's still small, but we're up to 110 subscribers. And we are really thankful for each and every one of them. Thank you guys for hanging out with us, um, listening to me ramble on. And I want to give you just a sneak peek, just a few seconds, into what is coming up in Dark Moon in the future. One of the advantages of signing up and watching us on Facebook or visiting our website is you would have already known about our brand new Plasma Cam CNC plasma cutting system. This is going to be featured in several upcoming videos, so once again, stay tuned. You see, YouTube? I told you there were interesting things going around the shop. Well, anyway, got to end the video. This is Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. Hope everyone has a good one. I'll see you all again soon.